and we're recording. Hello, hello to everybody. Um, I'd like to in introduce you to, if you don't already know, this is Diane Hall, um, specialist in helping people with test nerves, and that's learner drivers, PDIs, ADIs for standards checks, perhaps audit trainers for their audit tests. Um, and Diane has all, all manner of different offerings, uh, as well as in person, there's loads of online resources. And I'm sure we'll get to chat about those as we go along. Yep. So I'll be sure and stick around till the end in case you miss something. <laughs> so good evening, Diane. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. How are you? Lovely to see you. <laughs> Fine and Diane. All the better for speaking to you. Thank you. <laughs> so I suppose for those who don't know you, before we start everything, you know, to give us your life story. <laughs> <laughs> How long is your Zoom account for? Okay, um, I'm the grand old age of 56. Uh -huh. um, I've been an EDI trained with Shaw Pass, the lovely Helen Berry, who scared the bejesus out of me back in August 2002. Right. Um, and then I got so fed up with the number of learners that went to pieces on the day right. and came back from the test going, oh, I can't believe I failed. I never do that. Yeah. And I saw Paul McKenna on TV about November 2007, doing all this weird and wonderful stuff. And at the time I thought, well, that's the biggest load of rubbish I've ever seen. <laughs> and 18 months later, I ended up training as a therapist, writing mm -hmm. Elevoy to Pass to help learners overcome driving anxiety and test nerves. So that was mm -hmm. the, the potted mm -hmm. history. <laughs> right. Well, I, I mean, that was one of the questions I was going to ask, you know, which came first, the therapist or the ADI? ADI 2002 right. and um, therapist 2008. Right. So you saw your, is an ADI first. Saw your best learners fall into pieces on the test and thought, well, why has that happened? <laughs> it all happened. Yeah, it all happened. I had a lady called Jane Davenport and I remember it. I mean, it was, oh gosh, 12 years ago now. It's as clear as day. I can remember it like it was yesterday. She said, I can't wait to do my test. I'll be so excited. I'll be able to take my daughter to the hairdresser and I'll pull up outside the hairdressers and I'll feel pride as punch. Now, I'm not going to swear because you're recording this, but she said, I know I'm going to totally think it up on the day because I'm useless. I always fail everything and I'm useless. And I just thought, gosh, in that one sentence, you've just destroyed all of your confidence. And Paul McKenna had written these books, I can make you thin, I can make you rich, I can make you confident. I can. And I thought, I need Paul McKenna to brainwash my students into believing they're as good as I know that they are. And that's yeah. where the gem came for Elevoy to Pass. And that's where yeah. it all started. Well, well, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, can, I, can, I can recall back in the day when I was, I think I was still on, on a trainee license at the mm -hmm. time. And I had a girl that I was teaching. She was brilliant, mm -hmm. but put her on a test. And, and the old boy who, who taught me to be a driving instructor, we hatched a plan between us. We got some plain aspirins, found out from the parents, she's not allergic to them, and gave her <laughs> them and made this big play about them being magic tablets. And I'm picking you up at 7.40 for your test at 8.40 back in the day. So you must take one at 11.40 at night and the next one at 7.20. If you get it 10 minutes out, they won't work. And, it, and she oh. came bounding out the house. Yeah. So I went, this is test number nine, this was. Oh, she gosh. said, I feel great, don't feel nervous at all. Went, clean sheet. At the time, I thought... Amazing what the mind can do. What was that? But I never... I don't know why, but I never really got got to look into it. So it's fascinating. So you you obviously took the step. So, I mean, well, let's just backtrack a little bit. What was it that made you want to be a driving instructor to begin with? Oh, right. Um, I'd actually been talking about aspirin. I worked for Bayer, who were the oh, producers right. of aspirin. And as we chatted earlier about aspirin and various things, I used to be a medical rep. So I was bidding big into all the pharmacological side, the doctor side, reading clinical papers. So my background was more the medical side. Right. And I was just so disillusioned because you would drive two hours to go and see a doctor, to chat to them for two minutes in the hope that they might prescribe your pills. Right. And there was no, there's, the money was brilliant, but there's no satisfaction. Right. And where I kept my horse at the time, I'd got a friend who was a driving instructor and she came bounding onto the yard going oh I can't believe it my favorite pupil has just passed it's brilliant and I thought right. I don't have any of that enthusiasm that you've got and I thought well I'm a riding instructor or have been in my past yes. so I know how to teach I always wanted to be a teacher I love driving I love speed well that probably doesn't go well but 
maybe. And, uh, <laughs> not breaking the limit, of course. And uh, I'll, thought, I'll edit that bit out. You like it? Yeah, just tell me, Zaria. Oh, that could be a drama instructor, and that was the Good. gem of the idea. Excellent. So I decided to train, and 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 that was the start of it, really. So, I mean, how was your how was your training journey? Was it fun? Was it because not everybody has a fun time training? To be honest, Absolutely so. lovely. Um, I mean, obviously, it was on the old part threes. So, you know, your precept yeah. test, you know, you know, by the end of today's lesson, you'll be able to, with little or no help, that you know how the old style was. <laughs> yeah. um, and it was with Helen Vary from Shore Pass. Right. right. And if anybody knows Helen, she won't mind me saying this. She gives the biggest hugs ever. <laughs> and I was petrified of her and I remember being in the car with her one day telling her that the following distance was two to three feet not two to three car lengths but two to three feet and she religiously followed this car at two to three feet at 30 miles an hour and I did Helen you really need to slow down you need to drop back yeah but you said two to three feet and it didn't didn't click what I was doing but she was an amazing trainer so I, I mean, went to the badge, <laughs> stayed with Shore Pass for a little while, and then went out on my own in 2003. Cool. So how much of, I'm uh, just interested, how much of your, your role as a, a horse riding trainer did you bring into the AVI stuff? Or? Oh, absolutely tons. If there's yeah. anybody watching this who's horsey, you'll know you can transfer so many things. And with my horsey ones, you'll have a game of how much you can use and horsey analogies. So if you've got a weightlifter, say, and he continually snatches the clutch, you would talk to him about, oh, well, when you do your leg press at the gym and the plates go bang like that, how much does that annoy you? Well, that's what you're doing to my clutch and it clicks. Right. So it's the same with horses. You know, you can bring so many of those things in. I was used to teaching one-on-one. -on -one. Um, rapport building so yes so much of it is is relevant to um to driving tuition so i mean it's it is interesting it's about making connections isn't it really so, yeah absolutely yeah so that then leads logically to the to the therapy end of things mm. so you, you let us know sort of what 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 piqued your interest in it what was what was that journey like then how was that very very interesting um i say it was all part sparked off by this jane davenport who was about, you know, really excited about a test and then talked self into failure. Um, I then had another pupil who was friends with a counsellor called Matt Wilcox. And we got chatting and he said, do you know, you really ought to do something about this. Got chatting to Matt and I said, I've no idea where to start. I would love to do all the stuff that like Paul, because Paul McKenna was pr pretty big then about 12 years ago. Yeah. And I said, but I haven't got that, you know, driving instruction wasn't paying a huge, I think about 15 quid an hour then, yeah. uh, wasn't paying a huge amount. I'd got franchise bills originally to pay. And um, then he said, well, why don't you look at getting a grant to do some training? So I put a proposal together to help nervous and anxious learners, those ones with dyslexia and dyspraxia, and I approached Unlimited, which is the Millennium Awards Trust for Social Entrepreneurs, right. presented my business idea, and I ended up getting a grant of, think of about £1,500. Excellent. Which, uh, enabled me to train, uh, do all the training as a thought through field therapist, do a load of work on NLP and various other therapists. Uh, therapists. I wrote the book, Out of Way to Pass, yes. which is still on Amazon now, the, old, the very old version, um, and enabled me to publish that so that's where all the therapy started and that's then the, that's the one that you've shared for the, the boys and girls for free haven't you on, uh, on yes the, on similar the, that's part of it so we've got how to beat part two three standards check nerves and anxiety it's normally 995 but you know pdis especially i've had such a rough time these last few months and sure. people like yourself and others are doing all good stuff like these webinars to help people out sure. so it's just a nice little way of giving back so, so stick would, around. if anybody you, wants it, I'll give you the link. I was going to say, where would people find that? Um, can I message you the link? Is that Absolutely. the thing? Absolutely. And then if people, if you follow the link that Bob will put on, and then when you get to check out, it'll say coupon code. If you type in the word standards with an S at the end, standards, or lowercase, the yeah. 995 will be knocked off and you'll get it for free. Brilliant. So you can just download and keep that forever. So we'll have the link, but 
just give us the web address now where they go to get it oh um my website is l of a way to pass dot com but it's all on the new driver program website so i'll, I'll give you the link direct to it yeah, yeah well I'll, uh, so that, it's just because somebody listening to this might think hmm i might have a little look with that a look at that so i suppose well, that's what I... type in l of a way to pass so it's l of a way then number two pass right I don't know whether you'll be able to see that on the camera. Google should do the rest. Oh, it's gone, it's yeah. gone blank. I'll just type in Diane Hall, driving instructor, it'll come up anyway. Cool. So what would you say mm. changed? I mean, obviously you're helping people with nervous stuff, but would you say that it changed the way you approach the rest of the job? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think you and I discussed this the other day, teaching years ago, um, anxiety, pull yourself together. Sort yourself out. Yeah, sort them. yourself out. Uh, go to Tesco's, go and buy yourself some manuk pills. You know, it really was yeah. that multi sensory teaching. When I do my workshop, we joke that multi sensory teaching was just shouting at pupils in different tones. <laughs> and it really was. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. If I'm speaking to a foreigner, if I speak loudly, you will understand this. And <laughs> it was very, very much the old any pdis listening to this now they don't know what it was like for us when we were teaching 15 20 years ago and it was very tell 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 there was no coaching not so much q a and it was almost like well this is a syllabus and this is how we do it yeah um so i think i was probably one of the earlier ones to try and think hang on a minute there's got to be a better way yeah. and i pretty soon realized that 90 percent of driving is neck up Physically, as long as people can control the clutch, they can stay and can change gear, we could do the test in 10 hours, couldn't they? Yeah. You know, theoretically. It, so on, it, on, it, it's all this. On test day, it's probably 99% up there, isn't it? <laughs> yes, more, more than likely for some, yes. <laughs> well, it's just fascinating to, to just look so it's, you know, so it isn't just with nervous learners. Mm. You, you apply it with all learners now, what? Yeah, I mean, I think, to be honest, all of us have got in to the coaching side and client centered, and that's the way the industry is going. And obviously not every technique is gonna work for every learner. No, um, no, no, There's lots of discussion, isn't there, about, well, it's still client centered if you tell a pupil what to do, because that might be the way that that pupil learns. Yeah, and I, I, the I, again, it, yeah. <laughs> you speak to coaches and they'll, they'll tell you that instruction is the work of the antichrist. Well, that's not necessarily the case, you know, it's, it can form part of a way to coaching things that work. I'll tell you what to do here. How was that for you? What have we learned from that? How will you apply that elsewhere? So it's, I think. Absolutely. And it's the same with the nerves, yeah. Yeah. Everybody seems to want to take a position and then argue. It's a bit like Brexit coaching. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it is interesting when you, you know, you first come across these things, you, you know, like you were saying about the therapy stuff, it looks like it's smoke and mirrors, but then when you get into it, do you find it makes you a bit of a, an evangelist once oh. you've discovered it? Yeah, when um, I remember, I won't say who it was, but there's a Facebook group called The Funny Side of Being a Driving Instructor. And a very good friend who he is now actually posted on there once, oh my God, no, don't go to the test centre if Diane's there because you'll never get away. <laughs> and, and it really, but it was true. And when I first trained, I was sort of in everybody's faces. This is amazing. I, was, I think I was almost trying to prove to myself as well as everybody else that it worked. Yeah. Because like you said earlier with your pupil with this pill, if I said, this pill is going to cost you hundred pounds and it's going to cure your nerves. People go, oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. If I say, oh, try my techniques and you're going to tap on acupressure points that is similar to, you know, having acupuncture. So you're going to tap here, here and here and that'll cure your anxiety. Right. They look at you like you've oh. come off planet the dog. You're so right, I, think, no. <laughs> I think I was almost trying to convince myself as much as them. Yeah. So 12 years ago, yes, I was very evangelical about it and probably forcing it on people a little bit. Nowadays, I'm a lot more laid back. Yes, I'm evangelical, but yeah. it, it's, I think it, with the confidence of 12 years of amazing, amazing results, yeah. you tend to be a bit more laid back. And if somebody questions it, or it's a load of rubbish or oh, it's pseudoscience or whatever, I just go, well, you know, <laughs> I don't work, so you've got your opinion fine. Mm, Whereas before, I'd be like, 
<laughs> no, it works, seriously. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, like you say, the confidence that comes from seeing it in action, isn't it? Yes, The thing absolutely. that I notice about the, the coaching end of things, which is, you know, sort of my bag, if you like, the, it has mm. an impact on the rest of their life. Do you find the same with the therapy stuff, that they take that into other areas of their life? Oh, yes, absolutely. So my partner, Chris, was, he's now an ADI, mm. but if you've heard of CAMS, which is Children's and Adolescents Mental Services, he used to be a psychotherapist with CAMS. Uh, since lockdown and we've been off, we've been writing a brand new course called Phoenix, so if there's any teachers or ex-teachers or anybody watching this who knows a teacher, this is a brand new course. So similar to the stuff we do for driving instructors and learners to take into schools. So all the techniques that we do are generic. So the frustration that a learner feels at a hill start because they keep stalling, they get embarrassed, intimidated, frustrated, yeah. panicked and anxious might be the same as a PDI feels on a part three. Right. or might be the same as a dyslexic student feels standing up in class having to present or somebody on a job interview. So all the techniques are generic. So they work on the emotion attached to the event, not the event itself. Right. So everything I do, it can be used for anything in life. And if you think every waking moment in our life has an emotion, hmm. whatever we do throughout the day, yeah. there's some form of emotion attached to it. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. And what you want to do is have techniques to get rid of those bad ones. Yeah. Well, it's uh, the behavior is formed by what we think and what we feel and our emotions, isn't it? So it's, it's, it's by. Oh, tackling yes. The... Um, yeah. Sorry, go on. Yes. Oh, no, sorry, Bob. I was just going to say if you read my stuff, and this is covered in the ebook that we've got as a freebie and on the um, courses as well, um, Chris will shout at me for making this so condensed because he said this is a six month psychotherapy course, this bit. But your words create your feelings. In turn, those feelings create emotions that create your behaviours and your traits. Mm. So, for instance, a pupil goes, I hate this roundabout, I always stall. So they're already talking themselves into failure. So yeah. their self-talk is very phobic, their negative language, what they're saying, their head or out loud they're saying, this is what happens. That yeah. creates a feeling that then creates the emotion of nerves, anxiety, panic, fear, intimidation, embarrassment, or whatever. This anticipatory anxiety builds and builds and builds. That then becomes their behavior. Yeah. So as soon as they're coming to this roundabout from 100 yards away, the anticipatory anxiety is building. The brain is flooding with the stress hormones, cortisol and adrenaline. They get um, what's called auditory exclusion. So you could be going, break, break, break. But because the brain is shutting down the hearing and peripheral vision, they don't hear you. And then they pull out on the lorry because they haven't even seen it. And then that becomes an, a learned behavior and a trait. So every time they come to that roundabout, I hate this. So yeah. what we're looking at is the techniques to break that right. and to change the language and give them techniques. Yes. So Sorry, that was a lengthy one, wasn't it? No, no, it's good. I mean, it's fascinating, fascinating stuff. And it's, you know, it sort of mirrors a lot of the stuff that Galway was talking about in the inner game of tennis with that, that self-talk. And it, it sort of feeds itself, oh, yes. doesn't it? And it's just before you yes. know where you're at, a monster has grown next to you from almost nothing. Absolutely. From and an innocuous stall. We, yeah. And, and the problem is we use things called protective measures. So you've got um, a standards check coming up. So you go and shut the letter of it the shut the letter in the desk and try and forget about it but then the day looms or you use language like pull yourself together don't be so stupid you're pathetic grow a pair you know what whatever right. but protective measures don't work because you're just fighting yourself well it's something that i notice online when people are talking about it we start mm. by describing it as the dreaded standards yes. check so absolutely yes. the letter hasn't arrived yet and you're dreading it it's like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. this is this is harmful. This train of thought isn't going yes. to help you perform well. I mean, it's, I mean, thinking about this from the, the other end, I mean, obviously you're, you're a convert, um, but and you know what it brings to you. But if you were, if we'd met at the test center and I was saying, yeah, sounds rubbish that mate. Nah, yeah. why would I bother doing that? So I mean, excluding the fact that I can probably generate more demand from your services and make more money. What's in it for me as the ADI? Why, why should I bother doing it? 
what's it going to change about my life? It was interesting because when I first wrote Elevate to Pass, the two things we said for pupils is take away the fear and anxiety and learn to drive in fewer repetitive lessons because your learning techniques are going to reduce the anxiety. You can't learn when you're anxious. And I had a load of ADI saying, huh, well, that would mean less money for me. <laughs> and I said, well, do you want to give a damn good service and get recommended and potentially put your prices up because you are the go-to expert for driving test nerves. Mm. Imagine if you had access to resources from a thought field therapist, a psychotherapist for just a few pence a month to give to your pupils to say, you are gonna be able to combat drive anxiety, test day nerves, take away fear and intimidation, not scared and driving on dual carriageways. How many pupils are you gonna get as a result of that? Okay. So, so at the end of the day- it's Good for business, but is it good for yes. the ADI as well? For them personally, do you think? Oh yes, I would say so because for, them to help the pupils, definitely. I mean, not every pupil is going to need every technique, obviously, you know, oh, no, no. that's your job as, a, as an ADI. They're not all going to be nervous, but I would say a good percentage are, I'll come back onto the anxiety in a moment, but for the ADI, I would say the majority of ADIs, when I do my workshops, when I, I'll say, put your hands up if you like the standards check and the hands are firmly under the desk. <laughs> and then everybody, if the odd person raises a hand and say, well, I don't mind it. Everybody looks around at them as if they've grown an extra what's head. What's wrong with you? So I was, <laughs> what's wrong with you? You're not normal. What do you mean you don't mind the standard check? Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I can I just a... say? Yeah, yeah, fire away. I was just going to say, just on a note of anxiety. 15 years ago, a study was done. Anxiety in teenage girls aged 17 to 19 was 7.9%. It's now 23.4% of which half of those have tried to commit suicide or self-harm. Social media And that is chance? only the ones that have, sorry, again, Bob? Social media per chance? Oh gosh, yes. I mean, this, uh, we'll be here all night. Chris, yeah. my partner's doing loads and loads on this the effects on social media is it narcissistic behavior lack of empathy within society i mean this is the biggie and this is what's going to go to phoenix but this is kind of a little bit above the remit of us as adi this is more into our therapy side of working schools but yeah social media has a huge huge part to play in this i'm pleased i raised so, my anxiety yeah. i'm pleased that i had my children coming through before we really had all of that so I mean I, yes, absolutely. I always sell the coaching thing is because it'll make you feel better about yourself when yes. you're and I imagine the therapy stuff's the same oh absolutely yeah hmm. I mean would you would you recommend ADI's training in therapy even just a little bit now, this, this is interesting because um, Jed and Claire Wilmot, um, I ran some courses with Jed and Claire going back a few years, and they both went on and trained in Thoughtville Therapy. Right. So it, it's one of those, you know, there's so many courses on coaching and everything else on the therapy side, and you can be a little bit CPD to death, as, as it were. Yeah. And it's not just a... It's like coaching, it's intuition as well. Mm. And this, I mean, I've been doing this on the therapy side 12 years. Um, so it's not just a quick, oh, a couple of days and then you're qualified and let's do it. There's, there's all the background. So for any ADIs that want to go that route, great. If not, we've got the Driving Test Nerves Pro. So instructors can sign up to that, a bit like Theory Test Pro. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then they can sign their pupils up to it. It's normally 9 95 a month, but we're giving it free for three months just to help everybody out Ooh. and they're going to have a trial. So what they can do is they can have access to the techniques themselves, plus the instructor course, the ebook, how to beat driving test nerves and anxiety, sign the pupils up. Um, the reason we did this was when we were running the workshops over the last five or six years to train instructors in the techniques, they were all going, oh, this is great. And on the day, I want to go and do it. Then they get in the car with a pupil and go, oh, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. I don't feel confident yeah. in my own ability. And 
you've got to draw the line is are you a therapist or are you an ADI? So if you get a pupil who says, oh, I hate hill starts, great. You get a pupil who says, oh, I was trapped next to my mate who died, which I've had before, and I just can't, I just can't drive. Then as an ADI, you're not qualified, but beyond your they can use the techniques, the, yeah, beyond your remit. So yeah, I would say, yeah, if anybody wants to do the training, great. There's a few therapists and ADIs out there that combine the two, me included, but with the resources we've got, no need to, if you don't want to. Right, right. So it's just fascinating. So I suppose that, you know, by signing up to that, you're perhaps giving people the opportunity to dip their toe in it and see if they think it might be something for them. If they wanted to take yes. us to the next stage, do you help them with that? Do you offer those sort of services? Yes, ab okay. absolutely, yes. So um, that's something that, that, I say there's a fine line, isn't there, between mm. being an ADI and a therapist. So, you know, you've got to know where you, you draw the line. So that's where our techniques are, are beneficial. But here we've had quite a few instructors who have actually gone on to train in TFT or the sister therapy called EFT. Yeah. And we've, you know, pointed them in the right direction for that. I mean, it's, it's just Lady uh, it's, it's making, making it sound like it's an advert, but I think it's, you know, if, I'm just thinking that if I was sitting listening to this, I'd be thinking to myself, that sounds interesting. How do I find out more about it? So, so the same place that has all the resources is the same. Yes, I'll give a you a one stop the, shop. Yeah, the, the one stop shop. So they can find it all on NDP, our new driver program, or visit my website. Then there's the learner page and the instructor page. Um, and everything's on there. They can have a nose around. I mean, it's fascinating stuff, and we could, we could talk all night about it. Maybe we'll come back and do another one later there to, to get involved in a little bit more. Maybe we are hubby, you know. Yeah, well, we can bring Chris along, and he can give his paddy worth as well if you want. Excellent. So, looking outside of all that, what do you do when you're not being an ADI stroke therapist? Oh, right. Apart from washing, ironing, cooking, cleaning, right? I have two massive, <laughs> I have two massive Newfoundland dogs, um, the big water rescue dogs with about twelve stone. I have a battered old Saab convertible, which I absolutely love. So the dogs sit on the back seat with the hood down and the sunglasses on. So I love driving that, taking the dogs for walks. Um, love gardening. Um, used to be a riding instructor and haven't ridden for a few months, but really want to get back into that. Um, but the big thing at the moment is Phoenix. Uh, the, the, so it's basically the driving instructor and learner driver equivalent schools. So yeah. that's our big, big baby at the moment, big project. Right, right. I mean, it's been absolutely and utterly fascinating finding out what goes on in the, in the world of Diane Hall. I mean, obviously, I been aware of it for some time but it's um i mean obviously you came to to my notice because you've offered the and thank you very much for that offered the free resources on my pleasure the with a surgery so i would urge everybody mm. to have a look i'm going to <laughs> see because it, it, yes. a lot of what you're talking about it just sort of run along the coaching path it's all about oh, abs behavioral change, absolutely isn't it? it's it's yes if, if you think i mean the the two main techniques in our uh in the ebooks and the courses is the thought fill therapy that is in that's in the stress buster section it looks a bit weird and bizarre but it's what's been used on the troops returning from afghanistan with ptsd oh, okay it's also used by virgin airways for fear of flying uh if anybody's old enough to remember hurricane katrina yeah. and the rwandan genocide yeah. it was used on the survivors right. so thought fill therapy is incredibly effective and the other one's a little bit more from Chris's side on the psychotherapy from the world of CBT and otherwise, mm. and changing our language to change our emotions. Mm. Excellent. I mean, I think like, touching on CBT, uh, you know, mm. oh, it's not CBT, CPD, I'm trying to say. CPD. CPD <laughs> that we talked about a little earlier. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. Um, no a therapist <laughs> that can help with that. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> it's alcohol I need. The, uh, <laughs> the cure for everything. One to need. There's a difference between one to need. <laughs> I'm going to sit on the fence on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Which probably indicates that it's want. The um, I think people often sign up for things for CPD, and there's that's not a massively diverse offering really within our industry. When you look at stuff like teaching or the medical profession, mm -hmm. the range of CPDs. 
But this yes. is something I think that's that's fascinating. That it's and you've given people the opportunity to do it for free, which is and more power to you. So I would suggest everybody to have a look. Diana, it's been an absolute blast talking to you. I really enjoyed thank it. You. It's been and brilliant. Thank I've loved every minute. <laughs> Thanks for sharing your time with us. And uh, <laughs> no problem. Nice to see you. <laughs> so we'll speak in a bit. <laughs>